I've never been uh, one to criticize um, a parent for how they raise their child only because I'm not in that position. I will never be in that position. So for me, it's you got to pick your battles, right? And criticizing a parent is probably the lowest you can do, especially coming from someone who isn't one, right? And everyone deals with their situations different because depending on how you were treated as a kid and how you were parented is more than likely how you're going to reiterate that behavior. There are some people that obviously break the cycle, obviously change that connotation, but for the majority of you guys, you repeat what your parents taught you. And a lot of people see it as a good thing. Um, but it is what it is, okay? Now, me going back, like this, like hearing about this 11 year old, this brought me back to when I was a kid, okay? When I was 11, these boys were at a whole different level than this 11 year old, basically telling the basically putting this this classmate of his in her place right that's kind of what the whole point of the manosphere is you have to put a woman in her place she needs to shut the fuck up she needs to not speak the world would be a better place if we didn't speak right that's kind of the whole gist of what is happening here okay that's the whole point in a lot of the manosphere uh, theories and thoughts and notions that a lot of these males have, okay? Now, with that being said, I think, you know, me remembering back to, like, when I was 11 and the school that I went to, a lot of the 11-year-olds that were men, or sorry, males in my class, because um, you're not really a man until you hit puberty, and for for boys, it's, you know, a little quicker than girls. Um, from my understanding, once you hit that puberty, you start having that male mentality. That Especially when you become like a preteen where you just don't, you know, care what other people think. You um, just want to do what you want to do or you feel like you don't. You don't need to abide by the rules. You're above the law. Um, that invincibility uh, connotation, right? That testosterone level kicks in really high. And to a lot of males, um, especially growing up, there's really, they feel like there's no consequences until the consequences arise. Um, but it's just from my understanding that even though the... Societal norm is, you know, uh, girls mature faster than boys. At the end of the day, they go through puberty first before girls. And having been, like, being, like, growing up, I was basically raised by my grandmother. So, therefore, I was around my guy cousins a lot. I was around men a lot so I observed their behavior whether it was them being abusive towards their girlfriends whether it was them being abusive towards my grandmother whether it was um them trying to pick a fight or them trying to think that they're they're manly or they're masculine because that's the rhetoric that's pointed out in the older generations like gen x and uh obviously millennials um but I think that it's interesting, like, are the younger generations moving away from where my generation came from? Because in my class, a lot of the guys were trying to have sex already, or a lot of them were having sex already. Um, if it wasn't, obviously, you know, intercourse, it was oral. And that's usually the mentality in high school, not middle school. It's usually that mentality that, you know, that's the end goal, right? You can try to get it in as much as possible. That's usually a high school mentality. 
I got to get as many girls as possible. I got to get it in as much as possible. I don't want to be a virgin in high school. Like that's kind of the, the whole gist of between Gen X and millennials. Um, I don't know what the rhetoric was for the zillennials, you know, the, the end of millennials, like the, the end generation of millennials. So when I got in high school, it got worse. You know, it was, you know, guys literally having their fun at school. Didn't matter which school I went to. Guys and girls having their fun at school. Um, that I don't give an F mentality of I can sleep around with whoever I want. It doesn't matter if I get an STD, an STI. And then, you know, the whole pregnancy pops up, the pregnancy scares, and then the pregnancy actual uh, situation pops up. And even then, the male, uh, you know, the partner would, you know, send their, their girlfriend off to whatever they wanted to do as like, far as like, whether they wanted to keep the baby or not. Obviously, the, the girl had to leave school and figure that out. That's kind of how it worked in my generation. Um, back in, you know, our day is if you got pregnant, you had to leave the school and you had to figure out what you were going to do. There are, well, there, I don't know how it is now, but the, there's like alternative schools for girls who get pregnant. And then there's, you know, back, go back 50 years, then it was, you were sent off to a convalescent home. Um, and you were like ashamed of the family. Okay. So that's kind of how it was back then too. Um, but more than likely the, the, the girl would stay in that school and have to deal with the ignorant comments and, you know, not every pregnancy is because she wanted it type of deal. Right. I'm not going to go into the logistics of that, but even if the guy got his girlfriend pregnant, he would still want to sneak around and she still want to sneak around and try to get it in because, you know, his girlfriend's pregnant. She's not going to want any, she's not going to want to do anything. Um, and let's be real. A lot of couples are like that now, you know, with, you got the wife at home with three to five kids and the man's out skirting around, the man's out doing what he does best. Right. Um, and we live in an era now where a, a man can have anywhere between eight to 15, you know, baby mamas and be praised for it. But if you flip that, then if the woman is, is seen, you know, with, uh, you know, three to 10 kids and she's got a, each of them are different fathers, then that's a problem. You know, that's, that's the most horrible thing in the world. Um, even if she's taking care of them, right? Um, but get, but again, a lot of these philosophies that men have are from old time philosophies, which are literally uh, taken piece by piece, uh, whatever piece they want from the Bible. It's pretty obvious uh, where these philosophies come from, because I, I've heard so many times that the Bible is uh, misogynistic and hates women. Um, and I find this, uh, the reason I find it funny is because it's a man-made book. So I don't know what you guys are expecting. It's literally a man-made book. There are some things that, I mean, it's very few. It's really, really, uh, very few, um, of God's actual words. It's very, very few. Um, I would say it's, it's the equivalent of a pamphlet as to what God actually said in there, but everything else is man-made. Right. So, I just can't help but laugh when people, you know, whether it's a man or a woman that, that states that, you know, the, the Bible is misogynistic and this is from back in, back then. And you can't be surprised by that when it's literally made by men and nobody to this day knows who made it, you know, nobody knows who wrote it. Um, but obviously I, I think that once we die, we'll know all the answers. That's just my opinion. The observation is that they're creating uh, newer incels. 
um, and new, I don't, what is it called when it's, it's a, when it's a woman who doesn't want a man either? Like, I don't, I know they're not called incels, um, but it's like a newer version of the pink pill community, right? I guess you could say. So we're creating a generation that doesn't want relationships at all, that we're, we're going to be basically, um, not create more lives. Um, basically it's going to stop. Well, oh, won't somebody please think of the children? I can understand from Andrew Tate's point of view, um, and why a lot of people don't believe that he's an actual billionaire. Because those of us that are in the, you know, 99% couldn't fathom that kind of money where you can't even, it's not even a worry, you know, like a, a lot of us can't just fathom that. So that's why a lot of people think that it's fake. A lot of people think that it's a persona or a scam, a facade, whatever, right? So let me get into the next topic, okay? And this might ruffle some feathers and this will probably trigger a lot of you guys. So be prepared. What I wanna speak on is I'm trying to understand, like doing a lot of research, talking to a lot of uh, males who are in the red pill, purple pill, blue pill type of philosophy community, however you want to place that, okay? A lot of these men that have this are quote unquote Christians. Some are atheist. Some are agnostic. Um, and I know that people want to push the narrative that these people are Christian. These are wholehearted, diehard Christians uh, that believe in the Old Testament that is misogynistic and, and women should submit and women should be nothing and uh, women are beneath their feet. Okay, I'm going to be real with you guys. Men that I've encountered within the last five years um claim that they love women, claim that women are everything to them, but it's really more of a hookup thing. It's really more, to me, it's more so, uh, the Charlie Sheen, uh, Hugh Hefner mentality, basically on steroids. Okay. Like, even though Hugh Hefner is dead, his legacy will live on through these men of, Women are whores. Women are to be used as objects. Women are just holes. I know that's graphic to a lot of you, but it is what it is. That's how a lot of these men think. Um, that's why we have the males fresh and fit to be so um, praised by men, so uh, eager to learn how to do this. Um, basically, the pickup artists. You know, I mean, Hugh Hefner was the pickup artist of his day and then Charlie Sheen was the pickup artist or example I should say that men wanted to be in my generation okay um he was the idol that uh men wanted to be in my generation uh Hugh Hefner not so much because um my generation didn't grow up with Hugh Hefner Yes, Playboy was around, but it was online now. It wasn't in the magazines. It was online. So I remember, you know, guys, or sorry, my classmates, boys and girls alike, wanted me to look at the Playboy website or the Playgirl website, for those of you who didn't know that does exist. Um, but to me, it wasn't an interest. Obviously, specifically because I was sex, tra sex trafficked. Um, it wasn't an interest to me because I was already... I, I didn't hate men. To be honest with you, I was afraid of men. I was always on guard. I was always in fight mode when it came to much, much older than men. Um, it didn't matter if it was my teacher. It didn't matter if it was an officer. It didn't matter if it was a doctor. I was always in defense mode and ready to fight if a man touched me and I wasn't 
I mean, that was just a part of my PTSD. It was what it was. So that didn't interest me the way it intrigued and fascinated and turned on a lot of the boys and girls in my, in my classroom when I was, you know, growing up. So again, that's, I think that's always going to be the mentality of a teenager or a preteen or, and I know that a lot of people want to blame the content they're consuming, but at the end of the day, it really stems from your environment. You know, do you have both parents in the household? Um, if you have one parent, is that parent always working and, and not able to be with you or not able to, to give you the attention, advice, emotional support that you may need? So on and so forth. There's a lot of psychological factors that come along with that. that a lot of people don't um, think about or want to attribute to. They just want to blame something, right? That's kind of our how our society works. Let's blame something. Um, and speaking of, what I'm finding in this male manosphere is that as much as they want to hate on women for being victims or as much as they want to hate on on women for this victim and martyr mentality they are doing the exact same thing you can't sit with us and i find it interesting that as much as a lot of men want to hate on women they become victims themselves they become that mentality that they hate so much. Um, I hear a lot of men being whiny. I hear a lot of men crying, um, not physically, but emotionally crying, like, like literally whining. I call it bitching, but it's really whining that you're mean to me. I didn't do anything like literally sounding like the person that they hate the most. And the most popular word that a lot of people like to throw out is a Karen. And I find it interesting that those that throw out that word, oh, you're just being a Karen. Yet they're acting the exact same way. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's it can go both ways. So, in going through a lot of content, talking to a lot of men that have this philosophy, even those men that I've spoken to, um feel that 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 does happen that these men do become uh bitches themselves their words not mine <laughs> and they again they don't want to be around these types of men because it's like you're ruining what the manosphere is for you're ruining um you're basically ruining it for the rest of us that actually are involved in this movement and are involved in this community and take it seriously type of deal, right? And um, I, I just find it interesting that, I mean, I even went on someone's stream, and I'm not going to go into the specifics of it because a lot of you guys like to uh, troll and a lot of you guys like to just go after them and say, you're this, you're, you're horrible, and you're that. Like, I, I'm not into that. So I... I did see that a guy said, the, the commenter um, in the chat saying, well, I don't understand what you're bitching about because at the end of the day, you're not going to get what you want and you're wasting your time, you're wasting everyone else's time that's on here, that's watching you. And I would, I would always, I will always be a better red pill representative than you ever will be. And this dude lost it. Um... He went off. And to me, if you start insulting someone that confronts you, you've already lost a conversation. You've already lost an argument. You are basically done, dude. She's going to cry. And then I'm going to cry. We're all going to cry. Victim and martyr mentality is inevitable. When it comes to trying to expose others, when your agenda uh be basically becomes overwhelming when your agenda starts shifting and changing um to what you wanted before because let's be real a lot of people do change their minds it doesn't matter if you're a man or a woman a lot of people change their mind girl bye. and from the male perspective as far as these communities specifically but you guys have to give me like if you guys want to you guys want to contact me everything is always in the description you know 
you guys want to contact me, everything is always in the description. But I need something different than this is what I was taught. This is something that, like, I, I can give you scientific facts. I can give you, give me your uh, honest, actual opinion of why you believe what you believe. Why you're in this community. What What is it? that makes you be so die hard for these individuals. I mean, we still have individuals that are so die hard for Kevin Samuels that Kevin Samuels saved their lives. Um, in what way? I want to know in what way that this online person saved your life. And I understand that people can be inspired. I understand that people can be motivated by someone that they've never seen before. I understand that people can be driven by other people, right? I get it. But this is a little further if you think about it. Like this is, they saved my life. If it wasn't for them, I wouldn't be where I'm at right now. What about your family? What about other influences besides a man that's online? Besides a, a woman that's online? If you catch my drift. So if you guys want to have a conversation, um, I don't do yelling. I don't do arguments. I don't do... Um, I don't do, like, if, if you're going to be insulting and you can't help yourself because I'm a woman, <laughs> then by all means, keep that shit to yourself because I, I don't have the energy for that. I don't have the, I don't, no, that's, I'm not going to, I'm going to ignore your message if you just want to come at me because, you know, God forbid I speak, right? That's kind of the whole mentality of, oh, well, we don't want you to talk. Oh, well, you're, you just need to sit in your place. I mean, I might not be physically married with a piece of paper, but I've been committed with my husband for seven years, so you can ask him. So, uh, compared to a lot of women, um, I'll just say this, compared to a lot of women, because a lot of you males have been asking, compared to a lot of women, I have the old-fashioned way of thinking when it comes to taking care of your husband, your spouse, your, um, your partner. Um, even when, it, when I was with women or when I was with my transgendered or transsexual, um, uh, girlfriends, ex-girlfriends, um, regardless of who I'm with, that's just the type of person that I am. A lot of you guys might call it submissive. But you're supposed to take care of each other. Um, if that person truly does, you know, love you and care about you, you're supposed to take care of each other. Um, I just have that. Uh, it might be from the old uh, Mexican mentality because I grew up. Uh, my parents didn't raise me, even though the only time I saw my parents was abuse. But they didn't actually raise me until I later on in life, until I was you know, I was like ignoring them. Like that's how late it was too, for me and my sister, it was too late for you to raise us. Like you, you had your chance and now you want to be in our lives, right? That type of deal. So in, I picked up that mentality with my grandmother, learning how to cook at a really young age without my vision and hearing, learning how to clean at a really young age. Learning how to defend myself, learning how to do all the things that basically a, a teenager should know how to do. Um, but I learned that extremely early in life. Ironically, huh? But um, I think that um, men don't know this. Like, men don't know that you can be independent, but yet still be submissive and still want to take care of your partner, regardless of who that may be. Right. And me being bisexual, I can't just say men um, because I don't know where it's going to lead as far as me and my husband. I don't know if, you know, the, the relationship will continue. You, you don't know. You can't 
assume that you're going to be together forever, right? It is what it is. Um, and there is no such thing as forever. Because eventually one of you die. <laughs> you know? So there's no such thing as forever. To the point of people pleasing or me, me being a doormat type of deal. And I think a lot of women don't understand that either. That you can... Yes, you can. You can be submissive. You can take care of somebody. And it's not you not being a doormat. You not being stepped on. Or you being uh, in a domestic violence situation. I think that's where a lot of women get that idea from. That it becomes a... Uh, it becomes toxic. It becomes a domestic violence situation. Um, only if you allow it. I've been in domestic violence situations. A lot of times you allow it. And a lot of, I know a lot of women want to fight me. Well, it's dangerous. Um, duh. It's going to be dangerous because that individual that you're with doesn't have to be a man. It can be a woman. It can be a non-binary. It doesn't matter. It really doesn't matter. Um, but that person goes through a what is called a separation anxiety. And that's when they want to kill you because they don't want you to leave. Because they still want to torture you. They're not done with what they're doing. Um, and if you are lucky to get out alive, then you obviously know better than to get back into that situation again and not ignore red flags and not ignore what you what your worth is. So you see what I'm saying? So I know that a lot of women want to throw hate on that, that I just tell people to... Uh, avoid that as much as possible. But I, I see a lot of women to still do this. That they have been in, oh, I don't know, five, six uh, situations where where it's violent. And instead of going to therapy and instead of working through that and, and coping with that in a healthy way, in a realistic way, they just go back to it. Um... And again, you you just have to take care of yourself before you get back into another relationship. But again, that's that's a that's for a whole other discussion because that I mean a lot of people make that mistake. It's just men and women. Um, so I hope that you know I I gave you guys the satisfaction of this conclusion for now. I'm going to say that for now because, um, you know something could come up. You know, there's new content every day, but I don't feel like getting into every little thing one person says. Because to me, that's too tedious. To me, that's not a... Uh, what's the word I want to look for? Uh, that's not a healthy way of spending your time. You know, I, I see a lot of people just do this for views where they pick apart any little thing somebody said. And uh, that's why you see a lot of people that have, you know, 20 Gabby Hanna videos. That's why you have people that have 40 Deaf Needle videos. That's why you have people that have 50 Ethan Klein videos. Um, Keemstars. Uh, you get the drift, okay? It becomes an obsession. It's unhealthy, okay? So pick apart any little person thing that, because you can't stand them or you don't agree. Or you think they should be exposed. Or you think they should, you know, not be on a platform. So on and so forth. It's not healthy. <laughs> so I will let you guys go. I um, hope everyone is doing well. I hope that you guys um, are taking care of yourselves. And, you know, just enjoy the, what the rest of what we have. Because we don't know what's going to happen within the next three months as far as what's really going on right now. Alright, I love you guys so much, and take care. Bye!